Hey, this is Michelle Getzinger with Berkshire Hathaway, and today I'm here with Justin Conley from PA Capital Mortgage, and we're gonna talk a little bit about first steps of credit repair and getting ready to get your uh, pre-approval to get out there to go house hunting. So Justin has first-hand experience with credit issues, and that's kind of how he got into mentoring people about correcting their credit. So Justin, can you tell us a little bit about like the beginning steps of how you identified or your experience with having bad credit? So I did have bad credit at one point, and like I always say when I'm dealing with people to uh, work on their credit, I always tell them the first step, the most important step is to actually check your credit. Because mm -hmm. if you're anything like me, I thought it was impossible to repair your credit. I thought it was a long process. It would take years to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And at one point I had like a 520 score, and I just avoided it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's other people out there that do the same things. Oh, and yeah, put your head in the sand and ignore it, it'll go away. Hopefully it gets better by itself, but unfortunately it doesn't work like that. So the first main important step is to be aware of what's going on with your credit. And mm -hmm. after you're aware of it, taking the next steps isn't as bad and it doesn't take as long as what most people think. Okay, so the first step is to identify that you have to take a look at your credit. And then what's the next step? Who do you go to? Next step for me personally, I use Credit Karma. Okay. I use Credit Karma. It's a good free app that will monitor your everything that's going on with your credit. It'll tell you when new accounts are open. It'll tell you your balances. It'll tell you what if you have any collection accounts, card loans. It'll detail everything. They also give you a score on Credit Karma. A lot of people think that uh, the score is accurate on Credit Karma. It's not. On a lot of these free apps, they're taking a best guess of what's going on with uh, the three bureaus, which is Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Okay. So it's not exact, so don't, I get a lot of customers calling me like, well, Credit Karma or Credit Sesame, one of those things are saying my score's a 620, I pull it, it's a 550, and then they're like, well, why? Yeah. So, but it's a good tool to use to see roundabouts where you're at on credit score, but it really helps you monitor what's going on with your credit. Okay. Okay, so you go on Credit Karma, you get that initial st score, you start moving forward, you know that you're gonna get this fixed. Um, what goes into making your credit score? So there's five different items that go into making up a score. Okay. The first one is credit payments. Okay. So how you make your payments on all your items on your credit report. Okay. Counts for 35% of your score. Okay, so that's a pretty big chunk it's of a, it. It's a big chunk. So step number one, if you have missed payments in the past, to get all past due payments current okay. is gonna be- The first thing that you do. Very important. All right. Um, now also, when, when we talk about lates on credit, you can, like for mortgages, you can, after 15 days late, they give you a penalty, mm -hmm. a late payment penalty but it actually doesn't report to your credit, the credit bureaus until 30 days or later. Okay. So you do have a grace period there. It's not like you miss it one day later. The mortgage, the mortgage Nazi guy is gonna come up and yeah. take your house away. It doesn't work Yeah, it don't way. work like okay. that. So you do have 30 days to make that payment. And then a lot of times, a lot of people don't know on like installment loans, like uh, on your car loan, mm -hmm. if you call the bank and say, hey, this month was rough and you have, you're, there's some hoops to jump through, yeah. but they'll actually move that payment to the back of your loan, which isn't the best situation, but it's better than getting a 30 day late. Okay, so if they move it to the back of the loan, is they just add on another extra month payment? Another extra month on the end of the loan. Okay. So in that way, instead of missing and having a 30 day late on your credit, they'll work with you to move that payment to the back. Okay, and then there's, there's I'm assuming, penalties and... Uh, there are some penalties on it. I'm not sure. It's going to differ between each company, but that's something you can talk to your okay. lender about who's holding your loan. Okay, so to recap, the first thing that we're going to do um, is take a look at how our payments are and how behind we are, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. And how, what do you mean by how you pay things? Like, so you're behind on, okay, so we're using an auto loan as an example that you're late, late on um, and you miss a, a couple payments that you have to bring up current. But you don't have the money to do it. That's why you missed them in the first place. So is there a way that you can get on a payment plan to start bringing those past due accounts up to speed? Like, how do you do that? Because you're not normally able to, you know, pull all those missed back payments out 
of your back pocket or you would already done it, right? Well, yeah, that was one of the things by moving a payment to the back of the loan, but you gotta make sure not to be late okay. before you do that. Okay. Um, the, that's the only way I know for, for a car loan to okay. get, I mean, uh, and part of the... But even a credit card, say you were behind on your credit card payments, are you able to call them and negotiate to get caught up? I've never done it personally with a credit card. I'm sure if you called and said there was like a situation that that you were going through, that like hard times falling upon, that they don't want you to be late. They want to make sure you make your payments. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to. They don't want to send your loan to a collection Question agency. Things. Like they want to work with you to make sure that you make your payments, and they're going to. Most lenders work with you to through like a difficult time too. Okay. But a lot of people don't know that to make that call to ask to mm -hmm. see what they can do. Okay. I can't speak for every lender, but mm -hmm. I've done it personally with an auto loan before, where I said I couldn't. I was struggling. I lost my job. And I called them and said, I'm starting a new job. Can we do something? Mm -hmm. And they moved it to the back. So I wasn't late. My credit stayed in shape at okay. that point. And then the terms of it's going to differ from place lender to, place. to lender. Okay. Once we established payment history, then what's the next step? What's step, step number two? The next step is noticing what types of loans you have on your credit okay. and knowing what the balances are. Okay. So there's two different types. There's installment loans, which is your personal loans, student loans, um, car loans. There's considered installment. Okay. You have a balance on it. The balance is the, the max line is fixed. The balance will go down and you have a payment on it. Mm -hmm. The other type is revolving debt, which is your credit cards and your home equity lines of credit. Okay. Whereas you pay down your credit card balance, you could easily run it back up and it's, so it's revolving, it's not, it's not gonna stay the same. Okay. Now what a lot of people don't understand is that this is a big part, this counts for 30% okay. of your credit score. And so a lot of people come to me and they have a low score, they've never missed a payment, everything looks good, no collection accounts, but their scores are down in like the low 600s, let's say. Okay. And I take a look at their credit and all it is is that they have a credit card, let's say for example, a thousand dollar max line on that credit card. Okay. If you're carrying a balance of, let's say 900, that's okay. gonna drag your score way down. Okay. The ideal situation is for all revolving debt to be low, to be below 30% of the max line. Okay. So okay. if you're carrying, if you have a max line of a thousand dollars, you never wanna carry a balance of more than three hundred dollars. Okay. Now you can use more throughout the month, and then before your statement hits, you want to pay it down okay. at least to below the thirty percent to keep your score. Okay. And that's a quick fix. A lot of people come to me with that, and they didn't know that carrying a high balance is going to affect their score. Mm -hmm. um, they pay it down, and then they wait. It takes like a month or two to adjust credit. Okay. Because each, they have to report to all three. They have to report to TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. And the timing of it takes them. Okay. So it could so take it like a awesome. month or two to change, but it's short and it'll, it will definitely improve. improve it. Okay, so what about if, you know, I, somebody like me would think, I'm just gonna go in and just, I'll just pay off that credit card completely and I'll cancel it. Why, tell me what, if that that's goes a good into idea. one of our next items coming okay. up length of credit history. Okay. And I always, unless you, if you have really good scores, if you're above 760, then you don't have to worry about that as much, closing credit cards and stuff. But mm -hmm. they want, the magic number is seven years. They want to see seven years of credit history. Okay. That's, that's determined like good credit history, seven or more years. So let's say you have that credit card, you never, you don't use the credit card anymore, you don't wanna use a credit card that has a high interest rate, you're just gonna cancel it. But let's say you only have one other item on there, mm -hmm. a car loan that's been open for four years, yeah. and this credit card was open for seven years. You close that credit card, now your credit history went from seven years to four years, mm -hmm. which could really hurt your, your score right. by so doing great. nothing. It's good to have it then. Yeah. It's better to have it than not have it. I actually recommend keeping credit cards open. I, I've learned this trick not too long ago where I don't use this one particular credit card, mm -hmm. but I subscribe to Netflix, which a lot of people also have Hulu, Netflix, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, that's the only thing that gets put on this card, okay. Netflix, every single month. I have it on auto payment and it gets billed 
fourteen dollars every month. And then you pay Auto them. paid for fourteen. Yeah. Because if you don't use a credit card for a long period of time, they'll automatically shut it off. Okay. So you might not even want to close it, but one day, six months, I don't know what the time frame is, it's mm -hmm. gonna differ between each credit card company. That will just shut you down. Okay. Close by uh close by the account. All right, so let's recap. Um, what are the first three that we just give us the highlights again? So the first three, we got payment history that okay. accounts for 35% of your score. Okay. We got amounts owed, which count for 30%, keeping okay. your balances low on the revolving debt. And then the length of your credit history, you wanna keep it to seven years or longer. Okay. So those are the three already. So this is number four. Number four would be mix of credit. So if you have only one item on your credit and it's just an installment loan, a car loan, let's say, okay. and you have nothing else on your credit, this is gonna affect 10% of your credit score. Okay. So you wanna make sure to have, and that goes back to closing a credit card. Mm -hmm. Like if you had that credit card and you for seven years and you closed it, now you're down to just an installment loan for four years. Mm -hmm. And now you only have one type of, so if you have a mortgage, a car loan, and a couple credit cards, you have a good mix. Okay, of so you want to have a diverse, a diverse, um, a diverse mix of debt. Yes. All right. So now that we've touched one through four, number five is. Number five is going to be inquiries on your credit. So anytime you apply for for a new type of credit, it's going to have a hard inquiry on your credit. Okay. Does that lower your score or hard inquiry? Is that what they call pulling your credit? Pulling your credit. Okay. There's two different times, like two different kinds. One's a hard inquiry, one's a soft inquiry. Okay. When you go shopping for car insurance, home insurance, they do a soft credit pull. Okay. So there, no one's gonna know that they pulled your credit, but they are pulling your credit to check your credit history, your credit rating, but it's okay. not going to report. When you get a credit card, uh, personal loan, car loan, mortgage, those are gonna be hard inquiries, which are gonna report for the past 120 days okay. on your credit report. Now, does, that, to, low, does to, that lower your credit when they do a hard inquiry? So my suggestion is if you're shopping for a credit card and your score is low and you get denied, you should stop right away. Okay. Don't apply again. Okay. The more inquiries for like revolving debt is going to hurt your score. Okay. Uh, now, if you have a higher credit score, it's not going to affect it as much. Uh, and also, when you're sh so each time your credit's pulled, each person pulling the credit has a different code. Okay. So if you're shopping for a mortgage, it's going to be financing. So if so if I pull your credit, if a couple other banks pull your credit, it's all going to say finance. Okay. Now the credit bureaus know that you might be shopping mm -hmm. for a mortgage. So you have, I, I'd like to say, some people say longer, I always say 15 days. Okay. Within 15 days from your first credit pull for, to get approved for a mortgage, mm -hmm. you can have your credit pulled five, six, seven, eight times, okay. and it'll count as one. Okay. But if you're jumping around, if you're shopping for a mortgage and a car, then those are gonna be different ones. Different ones or okay. if you're opening a credit card, stuff along those lines. So okay. if it's in the same field, it's, it'll be counted as one. Okay. We went through all five recommendations from Justin of what to do during this process. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into um, what to do if you pull your credit and it's a hard pull and you get denied. So what should you do there? So if your score's low enough where you try to go to, it's called an unsecured credit card. So whenever you go to your favorite department store, gas station, they have credit cards. Those are considered unsecured because they're, you're gonna get the credit card and you're gonna swipe it in, you're using their money, and then you have to pay it back. Okay. If your credit score is too low where you don't get approved, stop having your credit pulled at that point, don't apply for any more, okay. and you wanna get a, what's called a secured credit card. That was my first step. When I, I was sitting there with a 520 score, wasn't sure what to do, mm -hmm. I tried to get it approved and, you know, I went to Best Buy the one time and they always ask you like, apply for a credit card. I'm like, nope, not gonna get approved, so. Okay, so anytime you go to a store, a gas station, Macy's, anything like that is considered an unsecured credit card. Right. Correct. You wanna get a secured credit card. So what are some examples of a secured credit card? So secured credit card, I use PNC Bank. Okay. Uh, so I walked into PNC and I said, I want a secured credit card. Now they're, they are going to pull a hard inquiry because okay. they have to. Mm -hmm. But I've never, 
I've heard of people not getting approved for a secure credit card, but the chances are very, very slim. Okay. Um, like I said, I had a 520 score. Okay. I didn't think I was going to get approved, but I, someone said that, you know, I read about it and they said that's the best way to start. So what I did was I handed them $250. Okay. They took an application. I got approved. Seven days later, I get a, a credit card mm -hmm. in, the, in, in my mail. Now, there's a $250 line on that credit, so you can't get real crazy. Yeah. It's not like you're, I was approved for like $5,000 and I can get out of hand real quick. So yeah. the max line is $250. Okay. It's my own money though. I handed them the $250 okay. for this credit card, but it works the same as a credit card. So I go to the gas station, I fill my tank and I swipe it and it's $30 on it. Mm -hmm. When I get, I'll get a bill the next month, a statement, and I have to make that minimum payment. Okay. So even though it's my own money, mm -hmm. I still have to replenish it every. Okay. And if you spend like, the minimum payment is $25, no matter what I put on it. Mm -hmm. So if I put $75 on it, I owe 25. Okay. Minimum. Minimum. What's the interest rate usually on a secured credit card? Uh, depending on where your credit, when you get it, I would say anywhere from like 16 to 24 percent. Okay, all right. But that's on 16 percent, 24 percent on 75 dollars mm -hmm. isn't going to be, we're not talking large amounts of, right. of money. This is just primarily like to rebuild your, right. yeah. Um, and it's secured because you spend all 250 dollars and you decide not to pay them. Mm -hmm. PNC already has your money, right. so they lost nothing, mm -hmm. uh, but it will hurt you because they're gonna report it as late payments. So it's a way to rebuild or establish credit. Okay. And that's my longest, like I had credit, had credit and then everything was closed, I paid it badly, that way, that's why my score was down. Mm -hmm. Everything was closed, five years later, I opened the secure credit card. Mm -hmm. So now that's the start of my credit history. Now, do all secured credit cards, do you have to put your own money in? Yes. All of them do. So what would like a normal Visa or Discover card be? Unsecured? Yes. Okay. So a secured credit card is when you go to a bank and you put your money in and you're basically paying PNC to use your money to establish your credit. Right. Okay. I don't know too much about this because it just started coming out and I've never done it personally, but now they have secured installment loans. And that's pretty much a secured installment loan. See, to me, I can't quite wrap my mind around these secured, because you're putting your money in and you're basically paying them interest on using your own money. Yeah. Now, am, I, am I understanding that yeah, correctly? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that's kind of blows my mind, but I guess you're right, because the whole thing you have to do is to establish it to show that you have the discipline to pay off your own line of credit. Yeah, if you're not willing to pay off your own money, then why? Why would they give you money? Yeah. Okay. And, most people, like if you have no credit or zero, like if you've never, you can get approved for stuff. If you have a complete blank slate, mm -hmm. like someone's going to give you a shot. One of these department stores are usually your best yeah. bet. But whenever you have like my credit history, before I started rebuilding and, and getting to the score I have now, mm -hmm. I didn't pay anybody anything. Yeah. So no one's going to take a shot at me. They're going to look and see 30 days late, 60 days late, collection accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, collection accounts are after, let's say you, I had a loan, let's just say I had a credit card through Discover and I never paid them, mm -hmm. but I ran up, it was unsecured and they gave me a thousand dollar line and I ran it up, but I never paid them. After, after a certain period of time, and it's different for each lender, they're gonna turn that over to a collection agency. Mm -hmm. And then the collection agency is gonna try to collect the money. Mm -hmm. And from what I heard, how collection agencies work is they buy, let's, they buy a, a greater sum of, they take, let's say, 100 accounts that are all in collections, mm -hmm. and then they buy those up, usually pennies on the dollar of what's owed. Okay. So then they have all these accounts, and then that's when you're going to start getting calls from the collection agencies to... And then when you pay the collection agency off, they're actually not paying JCPenney they're, they've already purchased the debt. They've already purchased the debt. So does that make them more um, likely to negotiate? Exactly. That's my next point is that 
I've never, I've had some collections accounts and I've never paid the full, the full amount. amount. The full amount isn't what I actually borrowed anyways. Mm -hmm. The full amount was a thousand and then interest and late penalties, payments, right. penalties, that can inflate easily a thousand, mm -hmm. fifteen hundred more than what you actually borrowed. Right. So a lot of times when I call collection accounts, I try to negotiate the best I can to to get that down. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know one thing's for sure is like, if you're gonna negotiate, you have to make the payment that day. Okay. They're not gonna get money. into a payment plan. Not okay. some, all. All of it, oh, okay. If I owed $1,000 to this collection agency and they called me and said, and I said, I can make the payment, I can make it today, but I have $300 available right now, I'll make the payment and we'll call it settled. Yeah. But you have to make the payment. Okay. If you want on a payment plan, they'll also do a payment plan, but they're gonna want the full amount. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I always suggest when you're trying to pay off collections to have a chunk of money ready to, and attack the small ones first, you know what I mean? I, I had collection accounts that were like $100. Right. And I called and I offered them 25, they came back with like 40, mm -hmm. I made the payment. Uh, now, one thing to know is that just because you paid off a collection account doesn't mean your credit's going to raise. How long does that take to usually repair? Depending on when they report, you know, it's going to, you know, differ. Do they normally but report like quarterly or? Monthly is monthly? usually, okay. yeah. So but it depends on, you know, when you paid it, when they report. Mm -hmm. So it might take some time. And actually, the crazy part is that when you pay off a collection account, depending on how old it is, it's actually gonna hurt your score at first. Okay. Your score's makes, gonna go down. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're taking an old debt uh -huh. that's still hurting your score, but you're pulling it back to current. Okay. So now it's gonna it's gonna hurt your score at first. Okay. I've had a lot of a lot of customers say I paid off collections and it actually dropped the score. But it will come back up, it's just gonna take, take some a little time. Bit of time. Okay. So don't get nervous when it drops. What some people will say to you, I'm sure, is, hey, I pay my electric bill on time, I pay my cable bill on time, my cell phone bill on time. Why doesn't that affect your credit? Why don't they look at, you know? So the crazy part is about that is like, you pay your cell phone bill, you pay your cable bill to Comcast or Verizon, you get nothing, no rewards for that. Well, you get to keep your service and not have late fees, yeah. but, and it doesn't get shut off on you. But as far as making the payments, doesn't affect your credit score. What will affect your credit score though is if you don't pay your cable bill. Okay. Because it will show up as a collection account. Okay, so if you pay them on time, you don't get rewarded. If you don't pay them at all, you get penalized, right. correct? Correct. So. so you want to make sure to make those payments on time. Don't let them go to a collection account, mm -hmm. but it, you still have to do other things. The items that report to your credit are car loans, mortgages, uh, personal loans, home equity lines of credit, credit cards, those items report to the credit bureaus. Okay. Car insurance doesn't, electric bill, cable bill, none of those report. Unless you do something bad, then they'll actually come after you with collections. So what about student debt and medical bills? How do those fall into your whole credit profile? You can make, if you have a medical bill and you pay it on time, same thing. They don't, there's no recognition that you have that bill. So, but if you don't pay it, and a lot of people have medical bills. And that's me in particular, because sometimes you have to wait to pay the bill to see if your insurance company is going to pay it or, you know, cover it or whatnot. So. Yeah, I see the medical bills a lot. Um, in the mortgage world, I can't speak for like the credit cards sure. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We really don't care about medical bills in, okay. in so collections. Do you have somebody in collections for that? It's yeah. usually like a dispute. Really won't affect us being able to lend on it. Mm -hmm. um, it'll affect your score though, okay. which you wanna. But if your score's all right, we really don't care about medical collections. So what, what is considered to be a good score? So the scores are broken down. Uh, a lot of people you see all the time is like 800 score, that's their goal, 800 score, 800 score. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need an 800 score. Anything above 760 is considered perfect score. Okay, great. Um, all across the board, I've never heard anything different. Credit cards, 760 or above, car loans, mortgages. So what's the, um, what's the minimum that you can get a mortgage? So minimum I can go down to is 580 score. Okay. 
Um, it's a case by case scenario. There are a lot harder loans to, to get approved. They're going to want a lot more documentation. There's going to be a lot more questions asked. It's going to be, I mean, if you're borrowing $100,000 and your score's a 580, they're going to have questions before they just give you $100,000 to buy a house. So, uh, and, your, and your interest rate might, might not be as good, right? It's going to be a little worse, yes. Um, with a score that low, I would go FHA has a good program uh, under 620 mm -hmm. to 580. It will affect your interest rate, but it won't be as much as if you were going conventional. Okay. So there are programs out there for the lower scores where it will affect it. Now with other uh, in, uh, credit cards and car loans, I know from experience, I had like a five mid 500 score, I went to buy a car, my interest rate was gonna be 17.99%. Which is super Which is high. through the roof. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's when I actually was like, I have to do something mm -hmm. about my credit score. Yeah, because like, now you're getting penalized. Yes. Yeah, yeah the, the amount of payments and amount of interest on that loan, I did the calculations, was just gonna be ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. And then I had to ask my dad to co-sign for me, which he was willing to at that point. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I ended up getting a 4% interest rate. That's a huge difference. But the very next car I bought after I did the work to my credit mm -hmm. and I went to the dealership and they were offering 0% financing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know if I can even qualify for that. And like, it was an exciting time. Like they came back and was like, you qualify. So I have a 0% interest loan on a car. That's great. So I went from 17.99 to zero within a short period of time. So now that we've talked about the secured credit card, there's also another way um, that you can improve your credit score. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So right now, um, in, in the credit bureaus, they're actually trying to get rid of this. Okay. Um, they don't want you to be able to do this, but uh, kind of a credit hack okay. is to if you have someone in your family or someone close to you that has a long-standing credit card. Okay. Um, so I'm brand new in credit, like, uh, so I have a 520 score. I have no established credit at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I just signed up for a secure credit card, so my credit history is going to be a one month old. Yeah. Um, and we talked about the different ways to build your credit. So. Uh, again, if I have a family, say, let's say my dad had a credit card that was opened in 2000 mm -hmm. with a $5,000 limit, never missed a payment, and a zero balance, you can actually add me as an authorized user onto that credit card. So you would get your own credit card with your name on it that's attached to your dad's account? Right. Okay. So I'm actually doing that for my daughter right now. She's in college, and I know she has no credit other than the student debt that she has, but she's had a authorized user credit card that on a credit card that we've had for 14 years so she actually gets to piggyback on the length of our credit right 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 she wow. piggybacks so now okay. if she had no credit now she has a 14 year history wow which is unheard of yeah which is unheard of and right. the credit bureaus don't want this and it's like a loophole or, and there's been talk about like them trying to like get rid of that but as of right now as of what i've known uh, it's still available. So if you have someone, unfortunately for me though, if I went to like my brother or like anyone like that and asked for that, where, where at the position I was at in my life when I was rebuilding, mm -hmm. no one would help. No one would have done that. Yeah. So if you do or are lucky enough to have someone willing to trust you to do this, it's a great way to... Well, let me be the devil's advocate. What happens if that credit card that you're associated with isn't being paid? Is that negative? Oh, yeah. That's so it, it works yours. both ways, it too. Work both, yeah. Okay. And if I get that credit card, a lot of times, like I know a lot of like customers that I've helped, they get that credit card, then they just hand it back because it's actually not theirs to use. They're just using the, the time frame. Okay. And what also it helps it is that, let's say you do have a credit card mm -hmm. and your balance is 1000 and you're at like 500 mm -hmm. limit on that. You're at 50% at the, you know, a thousand dollar limit, fifty percent would be five hundred. You're at fifty percent use of your credit cards, and you want to keep it at thirty percent. You want to keep it at thirty percent. Well, now you add a credit card with five thousand dollar balance with zero amount. 
now you're under the 30 percent mm -hmm. because they're going to look at it, the total okay so six thousand dollar max line and you owe 500 mm -hmm. so it's going to help all around yeah but you don't want to add if the if you were adding a credit card to your daughter and you opened it a year ago or six months ago and it has a a thousand dollar limit and it has a balance of 900 it doesn't help don't help yeah don't add at that point or if there's missed payments on it because mm -hmm. whatever you have on it is going to transfer to theirs i got you so be careful it's a risk for both sides to do that but it's definitely a loophole that you can access and when i have kids uh, i would definitely add them as soon as possible mm -hmm. as an authorized user okay. that way their credit history is going to build up and then I wouldn't even give them the credit card. Yeah. Now they can, you know, find ways to get there because they are an authorized user. So, so if they call the company and request one, they can do that. Yeah. So don't give my email out to any family members who... <laughs> Justin, thank you so much for your help today. Um, in closing, give us that last bit of nugget of advice for the listeners out there. My last bit of advice would be never stop. Like it's worth the the fight, the challenge. It's it's not going to be easy. It's easier than what I thought it was going to be mm -hmm. once I started taking the steps. My hardest part was just that beginning part, that fear of unknown, right. the fear of that it, it'll never be get better. Right. And and that's just not the case. And your life's long, so you might as well start aggressively um, working on it as soon as possible because it's never, never gonna um, leave you. It's gonna haunt you for the rest of your life. So just buck up and deal with it. Um, give Justin a call if you have any questions. I'm gonna put all of his information down below. He'll walk you through the process, especially if you're looking for a home, he's gonna guide you down the right path. Thank you again for your time today. And I can't wait me. to have you again. Absolutely. Have a great day.